Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne Darla. It's not and Darla. It's not Aunt Darla. It's not Aunt Darla. It's Anne Darla. But you can call me AD. Last name Jennings. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into Lizzo's new ish shapewear brand called Yiddy. Yiddy is a collaboration between Lizzo and a very controversial company called Fabletics. Fabletics is one of the many brands under the umbrella of fashion incubator Textile Group. Yes, Textile Group is the same company that has a stake alongside a very unsavory character in Rihanna's brand Savage Fenty. I made a whole deep dive about that. I'm pretty sure I'm the first person to have found out this information. So if you want to know where your consumer dollar is going when you buy Savage Fenty, I won't tell you what to do with your life. Okay. You do you, but I highly recommend that video. Now, Textile Group and its brands, including Fabletics, have a very troubled history that range from allegations of deceptive advertising to allegations of worker abuse at their factories in Africa. And if you think that's bad, wait until you hear what I found out about the founders. You know how in life chaos tends to attract more chaos? Well, now Yiddy has joined the Allegation Chorus with its own fair share of Drama Llama. The controversy that Yiddy has been embroiled in involves rainbow capitalism and the exploitation of the transgender community to questions being raised about Fabletics. And finally, a spotlight being shined on the problem with Lizzo selling shapewear at all. It's a lot to deconstruct. So this is going to be a long and juicy video. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the brand. And if there's anything I missed or you want to know about that I didn't mention in this video, just let me know in the comments. I do my best to answer all of them. And if you're familiar with any of the information in this video, I've labeled everything with chapters. So feel free to skip around and find the juicy tips and tricks and value you're looking for. So we're going to start with the history of the brand and then move on to the controversies. And also this, this look, while it's very, very nice, it's a little unpractical. So if I have any wardrobe malfunctions and my lipstick ends up on my teeth or on in my eye somehow, let me know. Okay. Help, help, help a sister out pretty please. So we're going to start with the history of the brand and then move on to the controversies. And if you enjoyed this video, the best way to support the channel is to smash that like button, man, and subscribe and share the video with a friend, drop it in a group chat. Um, you may or may not know this, but doing this YouTube thing is really hard, uh, but getting your feedback, whether it's positive or negative, I haven't gotten any negative feedback so far, but when I do, I will process it and you know, take it into consideration. It keeps me motivated and it, it inspires me to, to do better and to be the, the best content creator I can be. So, you know, if, if you, if, if you keep it up, I'll keep it up. That that's the deal. If you keep it up, I'll keep it up. Let's get started. The inspiration was, uh, Madonna meets Donatella Versace, but like on a budget, on a hella budget. I feel like it's pretty cute. I'm loving it. But it's like Madonna meets Donatella Versace, uh, but like make it a little kinky, you know? Hi, mom. So the Yiddy lore, and I'm calling it the Yiddy lore because most of the information that I can find that dived into the backstory of Yiddy came from celebrity profiles of Lizzo in mainstream media. The celebrity profile, especially when it's done within the scope, like timing wise, of a larger promotional campaign for a new project, like it was with Yiddy, needs to be understood as falling more into the territory of publicity than hard hitting journalism. Okay. It's what my mom would call fluff. There's nothing wrong with fluff, but consume the fluff accordingly. Unless the celebrity is in the middle of a scandal or already a controversial figure, but even then the New York Times can manage to fuck it up. There are limits to how far a celebrity profile will go digging wise. Okay. Nobody is like Lizzo. Did you really say that when you were 12 years old? 
Can you provide us with receipts or corroborating witness? Like, no. Okay. So all I want you to keep in mind is that this is the story of Yiddy communicated to us through Lizzo, but most likely packaged and refined in a think tank. That's correct. Ding, 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 ding. Melissa Jefferson, also known as artist Lizzo, is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, and actress. She was born in Detroit, Michigan, moved to Houston, Texas, and eventually ended up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. She is the flute queen, okay? Her flute game is lit. She's known for hits such as, it's about damn time. She struggled and hustled for years uh, before she broke through. And today, look at her, look at her. She's quote, celebrating every motherfucking person's birthday around her, okay? The bag has been secured, but at what cost? The Lizzo we know and love today is a celebrity that, much to the dismay of fat phobic misogynistic creeps around the world, is confident in her skin and flaunts her body. But it hasn't always been that way. Lizzo has struggled with obesity for most of her life. Before Lizzo came to a place of love and self-acceptance, her body was something that she was ashamed of and something that, like many of us, she wanted to hide. It's this very shame that led her early on to experiment with products like shapewear, which unfortunately just led her to hate her body even more. According to Harper's Bazaar profile, when Lizzo was only in the seventh grade, she was already in girdles and binding her stomach. She was wearing garments with plastic boning that she recalled would snap halfway through school and cut into her skin, leaving her bleeding. And on top of that, she felt like shapewear didn't speak to her as a consumer. Lizzo tells the New York Times that she would go shopping for shapewear and not only were those sections of the store often a mess and neglected, but they were not inclusive. The products they stocked only had a few colors and like nobody was that color. So at one point, we're not too sure when exactly, the timeline is ambiguous or mysterious rather, Lizzo goes, fuck it, fuck it. And she decides to break free from the oppression. Fuck the patriarchy! Yeah! And she starts to reject this restrictive mindset and instead chooses to embrace herself, assert herself, and express herself. It's an awakening that starts with music but also translates to fashion. She starts having fun with her body, creating shapes and allowing her body to be curvaceous, loving the roles that you're supposed to hide, and exploring through fashion. She also starts experimenting with shapewear in a DIY fashion. She tells the New York Times, quote, At a certain point, I started to make my own little pieces. Little moments here, little moments there, little booty lift here. As her status and fame grew, she gained access to resources and people who could help her make these things and make her specific body type look the best which in turn had her feeling her best. But Lizzo is a self-aware queen and she was acutely aware that this feeling was a luxury that few people, including her fans, could afford. Quote, I don't want to be the only one who can enjoy autonomy with my body because I am now in a privileged position where people want to make me stuff and I can afford it. I want to help other people out in that way too. So they're not just looking at me and thinking, damn, I wish I could afford custom thousand dollar pieces too. And so Lizzo would have a vision. She would one day create a line of shapewear that could bottle up that feeling and turn it into a product available to the masses. Something that wasn't meant to be hidden under other garments or feel like a dirty little secret. She didn't even want to call it shapewear. She wanted to call it body wear. But quote, no one knew what that meant. The panel was like, it's not a chop, but you, my friend, need to join the house of Delulu because you're looking a little delusional right now. Kind of like bitches who walk sex siren barefoot. It's only when the controversial brand Fabletics would be put onto Lizzo's path that the stars would align. It seems like Fabletics had been doing some market research and customer surveys to find gaps in the market. And all roads led not to Rome, but to shapewear. And so when Fabletics had a meeting with Lizzo's manager, Kevin Basler, and found out that Lizzo had been thinking about shapewear, they were like, 
No shit. We've been thinking about shapewear too. We should collab. Now, what made Fabletics different is that Textile Group, which is the pairing company, had just come off their success with Rihanna on Savage Fenty. As a little reminder, Savage Fenty is so successful that if the IPO the brand is shooting for goes through, it could be valued at $3 billion. And so Fabletics already had experience with the crazy amounts of success a celebrity-backed brand could have, and they were all in. Quote, we partnered with Lizzo because we felt like her vision for revolutionizing shapewear with a positive message of body normativity was game changing. Adam Goldenberg, one of the founders of Fabletics and Textile Group, which is someone you most definitely need to know. Don't worry, I'm gonna get back to him. And so Lizzo and the team at Fabletics would embark on a three year development journey to create Giddy. Lizzo being the chief executive and co-founder, the founders of Fabletics and Textile Group, Don Ressler and Adam Goldenberg being co-founders of Yiddy, we have someone called Kirsten Dirkstra as president and chief marketing officer, and we have someone called Carol Lacayo as Yiddy's head of design. So I love to see women in, in positions of power. You know, let's get it, let's go. So why is Yiddy called Yiddy? According to Lizzo, quote, the story goes that when I was born, my brother could not say Melissa, so he would go Mayida. And my aunt Carmen would go, did he call her Yiddy? From then on, it was Yiddy Yiddy. So when Lizzo's aunt Carmen passed away in 2020, a few months after that, she decided to call this brand Yiddy in her honor. Yiddy launched in 2022. It expects its sales to grow to $100 million in 2023. I don't know if that means it's doing well or not, but it's framed as a success. Yiddy exists in a shapewear market that is expected to be worth $6.95 billion by 2030. What we also know is that Yiddy is in direct competition for market share with brands that launched before it, such as Yummy Tummy, Honey Love, and most importantly, Kim Kardashian's Skims. Skims was launched in 2019. In being asked whether or not she thinks the market is oversaturated and that she missed the boat, Lizzo says, quote, there's nothing like feeling like you're in the right place at the right time. Good answer. The think tank prepared her. Currently, Giddy is available in sizes X small to 6X, which is one size bigger than any of Skims' offerings. But as an article in Shape.com noted, quote, for some, it seems that size inclusivity doesn't make up for the premise of shapewear. We'll get to that. To me though, the main difference between both of these brands, at face value at least, is the aesthetic. Yiddy is much more of a loud, colorful, and in-your-face brand, while Skims to date has stuck to a subdued, minimalistic aesthetic, and of course, a neutral color palette. Also, Skims seems to still be sticking to this played out drop culture habit of making sure that everything good is always out of stock to look cool. That is most definitely remnants of Kanye West's toxic influence on Kim Kardashian. So hopefully Yiddy is less annoying and puts its money where its mouth is and actually makes its products more accessible to consumers stock-wise. The pricing of Yiddy ranges from $69.95 to $74.95 for leggings and $49.95 to $59.95 for bras, which without a subscription to Fabletics may or may not be worth it depending on the product. And this is based on some YouTube reviews that I was watching for this video. If you know anything about Fabletics subscription service, you know that it's gotten a lot of heat and it's gotten itself into a lot of trouble. I'm going to break everything down for you in this video. Okay, Yiddy brands itself as sustainable and ethical, but as we'll see later, Fabletics is in the most transparent with its supply chain and what historically has leaked about it has not been very good. We're talking poor women in Africa allegedly peeing on themselves, not very good. Currently, you can only buy Yiddy through the Fabletics website and you have no choice but to answer a super annoying fucking survey to disclose information about yourself for free in order to proceed uh, with your shopping experience. You can get Yiddy's products at a discounted price with the VIP membership. Yes, the VIP membership. The VIP membership is $59.95 a month. If you don't want any items that month, you need to skip the month in the first five days of the month. Currently, Yiddy has a few collections under its banner. We have Nearly Naked, which is your more traditional seamless undergarments that are meant to smooth, 
visible belly outlines and lift your tits. We have major label, which is everyday loungewear pieces that double as streetwear and offer structure and support. We have mesh me, which is mesh pieces. I'm assuming with very light support. We also have Smoothed Reality, which is the brand's first ever Intimates collection, and Headliner, which is a shapewear meets party collection full of prints and bright colors. We have Denim is Sewed, which looks like denim inspired shapewear. We have Spotlight, which is shapewear with a shimmer. We have Pet Me, which is cozy loungewear. We have Black History Month, which is a collection inspired by Afrofuturism. The jackets look really cool. We have Pride, which is a collection inspired by Pride. And set to drop this summer, we have the dramatic entry of Your Skin by Yiddy, which is a controversial collection of gender affirming undergarments. It's interesting because when Lizzo initially teased Yiddy in an Instagram post on March 23rd, 2022, she framed the project as adding to a never ending victory lap. She goes, Quote, I know what y'all been thinking. Damn, Lizzo, you just announced a TV show and SNL? Now what? But y'all don't understand. I can't be stopped. This is my season. I'm about to be everywhere and I'm about to announce the biggest thing yet. Bigger than anything I've ever done. Three years in the making. A dream come true. Stay tuned, bitch. Well, I did stay tuned and shit got messy. In our Instagram-centric, clout-goggled rat race of a world, many influencers live under a constant pressure to always have something new popping off, to always stay relevant, okay? You're only as good as your last project, they say. The catch-22 is that when you move through the world in a blind rush for more, if you're not very careful, people in your wake might get hurt. And if you don't keep your eyes to the ground, you might just slip and fall. And Yiddy, in some people's humble opinion, was most definitely caught slipping. Slipping. So here's a play-by-play -play of the drama. I'm not going to pretend like I don't live for the drama. Other people's drama. My own life is peaceful, but stressful as fuck. But what I do enjoy is being drama adjacent. I don't like drama with or amongst the people I'm friends with. But if the people I'm friends with have drama with other people I don't know, and they consent to me living vicariously through them from the sidelines, then that's the dream. <laughs> that's, that's an introvert's dream, isn't it? I liked the concept, but the execution, it's gonna ride up the whole video. So on March 30th of 2023, this year. Yiddy teased a new line that would be dropping late this summer. They posted to Instagram, introducing your skin by Yiddy, styles that celebrate you, launching late summer 2023. When we say we support everybody, we mean it. We believe in radical self-love for people of all gender identities, including the trans, non-binary, gender fluid, and gender non-conforming communities that have been chronically underserved. I'm sorry, I just need to pause that because that opening paragraph is really giving Rihanna in the interview where she's like, yeah, we made products for all of the people of all of the gender appropriations and the he, she, they pronouns. So we decided to take our expertise. Some people argue other people's expertise, allegedly. We'll get to that. And create styles that serve those very same communities. Your Skin by Yiddy has been a true passion project. Constructed out of our famous headliner fabric, our new binder top and tucking thong have been two years in the making, perfected over time through extensive testing, community feedback, and attention to every meticulous detail. It is our mission to continue serving all bodies, which is why these core styles will always be available at Yiddy, starting late summer 2023. And this is just the beginning. We hope you can feel the love in every stitch. Well, if we take into consideration Fabletics' alleged history, it's more like the blood in every stitch. We'll get to that too. So immediately, an independent artist called Zachary Drucker, who also happens to be a trans woman, saw this post and was like, metaphorically, I beg to die for. You say 
Those are the facts, but those are not the facts. Drucker would post a series of tweets that would then be retweeted by the brand in question called Your Body. And it's only after Drucker's tweets that Your Body would expand on the allegations. Now, I couldn't find much information on what Drucker's relationship with Your Body is outside of them being friends and Drucker having appeared in one of their campaigns. So I really can't tell you why Drucker is the one who came forward with the allegations before the actual brand. That, to me at least, remains a mystery. If anybody knows, let me know. So on the same day as Yiddy's Instagram post teasing your skin, Zachary Drucker tweets, let's get the notepad. The notepad makes a reappearance. The pink one, of course. Lizzo, we heard today about the launch of your new line of gender affirming shapewear, Your Skin. And we wish we could have celebrated along with our community. Instead, we're left asking questions. And as an advocate for inclusivity, there are questions that we think you'll have too. And this is where the allegations get juicy, okay? For a lack of a better word. Lizzo, when your team ordered a full size run of trans owned business, Your Body and Co's compression tops in 2022, Your Body emailed to open the door to speak up for trans folks who'd been doing this work to be at the table of your skin from the beginning. Drucker continues, when Your Body and Co finally met with the Yiddy team in 2023, they saw no one from the trans community. It wasn't until today when you announced Your Skin, a line developed using Your Body's designs for R&D, that Your Body was asked to consult to further the success of Lizzo's brand. Fabletics, with the rise in anti-trans legislation and rhetoric, rainbow capitalism is more dangerous than ever. You need to recognize trans people beyond the value of our money. If you want to market to us as a community, you must take a stand for our safety, security, and survival. Yiddy and Fabletics. If you're going to make us the face of your line, we should also be the backbone. Lizzo, your team harmed members of the community you aim to serve, and we feel taken advantage of. So, as I said, Zachary Drucker would come out with these allegations first on Twitter. The day after that, your body would make their own official statement in an Instagram carousel, as well as a series of tweets, which is verbatim what Zachary Drucker had tweeted the day before. The only thing that was different in the social media posts was their Instagram caption. So let's read the Instagram caption together. LaCroix. By the way, it's not LaCroix. I know Americans watch my channel. It's not LaCroix. It's La Croix. La Croix. Repeat. L La Croix, exactly, not LaCroix. So the Instagram caption reads, announcing a new gender affirming line for trans folks the day before trans day of visibility, but not mentioning the attack on trans lives. I'm going to get back to this sentence because if there's one weakness in this Instagram caption, it's that sentence. And I'll tell you why. According to Business of Fashion, the line is also an opportunity for Yiddy to widen its consumer base, especially as it seeks to grow sales to nearly $100 million this year. The caption continues. As a small company with limited reach and resources, and with the awareness that black and brown trans women are the most targeted members of our community, we at Your Body were excited by the potential to see our community have a meaningful seat at the table with a brand represented by Lizzo, her platform, and her powerful vital message of racial and size inclusivity. Instead, we were left disappointed. Lizzo, we know you're an advocate for inclusivity and a supporter of the trans community, and we want to bring this matter to your attention. And then they put some hashtags. So that was the Instagram caption uh, from your body. Within the next couple of days, the allegations start picking up a little bit of steam. It's amplified by the likes of Fashionista and Yahoo. It sparks discussions and debate on Reddit. But most importantly, it gets amplified by the Instagram account Diet Prada. This is the post that I saw on Instagram and that drew my attention to this story. I get the sense that this is the post that drew most people's attention to this story as well. well. Let me get my notes again. So on April 3rd, 2023, Diet Prada posts, Lizzo's Yiddy teases gender affirming range, but is it at the expense of existing brands? 
Founders of Your Body, an innovator in the gender-affirming underwear space, are questioning whether Lizzo's new venture is meaningfully inclusive. Accompanying this post is a long-ass Instagram caption that we will read together. No, no assistant, nothing. Hair and makeup by AD. Filming by AD. Script by AD. Research by AD. Edit probably not by AD for this video. Probably by Travis. Let's read the caption of Diet Prada together. Lizzo's lingerie line, Yiddy, has fans happy to see themselves reflected in the campaigns. Until now. The day before Transgender Day of Visibility, they announced Your Skin by Yiddy, an upcoming line of gender-affirming undergarments, but didn't mention Trans Day of Visibility or the current worldwide attack on trans lives. Now, the trans community is asking if their inclusion is authentic to Yiddy's mission or if it's just a cash grab. I want to draw your attention to this paragraph because I really think that the line about you dropped a product for the community the day before Transgender Day of Visibility, but didn't mention TDOV or the current worldwide attack on trans lives, while true, is a weakness of your body statement. And I think it's a weakness because it can too easily be a trap. Basically, it too easily frames the allegations, especially in the minds of people who might not instinctively be sympathetic to your cause, as being spurred by and based around what some might deem as a technicality, okay? Which can easily make the allegation fall into the trap of being perceived as petty. But when you actually dig into the meat and potatoes of the allegations, if they are true, there's truly nothing petty about them, at least in my opinion, okay? But this opening paragraph really frames it as being like, oh, you dropped a product for black people during Black History Month and forgot to mention in your Instagram caption the names of all the black men who were recently murdered by police officers? Let me call you out for all these other things that you did that I resent. Implying what? That if it weren't for the mistake that you wouldn't have called them out? You see... You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a trap. Like that right there will make 50% of the people reading the caption, just roll their motherfucking eyes and check out. Okay. And also I think it just too easily opens uh, you up to a counterattack. Okay. So that's why I think it's a weakness. The caption continues, LA-based Your Body & Co. launched in early 2021 by founders Anna and Mir, driven by their struggle with finding expressive, affirming, and comfortable base layers. When Yiddy's team ordered an entire size run of their compression tops in 2022, Your Body saw a chance for discussion rather than a knockoff. As they told Diet Prada, Quote, we have decades of experience in the field of transgender health and fashion, so we're not naive to the fact that designers are regularly inspired by the designs of others. There, meaning your body, is committed to actively trying to create a world where body and gender norms include the whole gender spectrum, and folks can exist and express themselves comfortably, freely, and without fear. A platform like Lizzo's could help that mission. The caption continues. So your body reached out and offered to share their expertise, but didn't hear back until Yiddy placed another order for assorting tucking garments. They reached out again and got a meeting, hoping trans folks were behind the scenes. Unfortunately, your body says the expected representation was not present. Quote, trans people need systemic and structural support now more than ever end quote, the founder said via email, quote, trans visibility allowed us to find one another and become recognized as a group that deserves equal rights and access, but visibility without adequate protection and education puts us in danger. Businesses need to do their part to fight for us before they attempt to profit off of us. End quote. Diet Prada's post continues. Brands like Yiddy and parent company Fabletics have opportunities to do good, but too often choose the more profitable option above all. And we didn't even touch on the labor abuse accusations. Well, I will. So that was the Diet Prada post. The day after that, Your Body also released a statement on their website that I found to be really good. They rehashed all the allegations that had been made, but added more color to how this alleged experience had impacted them and how it made them feel. And honestly, it's hard not to feel for them. It's kind of heart-wrenching to read. So let's read the statement together. 
I plan on not having a mic in future videos. I'm going to try a lapel mic because I did get some feedback about my videos by one of my uncles who, whilst, you know, on the older side of the spectrum, has a lot of experience with like audio visual stuff. And he told me that my personality would shine through more if I wasn't holding something and I could just, you know, so I'm going to try that out in future videos. Do you agree that the mic that I could do without the mic? Cause I was really committed to the mic, but if people don't like the mic, then I'll, I'll, I'll kill the mic. I'll lose the mic. I'll lose the mic. It's fine. Your body is a trans and queer woman owned team. That's all about helping our community feel safe and seen by providing gender affirming base layers. We aim to help give a voice to our trans and gender non-conforming community at every level, including when it's needed the most. When Fabletics, Yiddy's parent company ordered a full size run of our compression tops in April of 2022, it signaled to us that they were planning to enter the gender affirming clothing space where we've been dedicated for several years. Years. So again, this reiterates the allegation that Fabletics in April of 2022 ordered a full size run, meaning one of every size of a certain product from your body. When your body saw this order, it obviously caught their attention and signaled to them that Fabletics was doing R&D and looking to enter the market, which by the way, is bold as hell coming from Fabletics. Like most competitors are not going to use their company card and their government name to allegedly copy someone else's products. The gall, the audacity, the arrogance. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm not, I won't go that far. I won't go that far, but like, come on. Anyways, but you know what this would have been a good time for? Receipts. Throughout this whole ordeal, your body would not provide us, the good people of the internet, with a single receipt, which blows my mind. Because if you do things like paying your taxes, there should have been a paper trail for all of this, and I would have loved to see it. Let's continue the statement on their website. We were encouraged. A brand with the reach of Fabletics and the platform of Lizzo could have the potential for tremendous impact on the needs of trans and gender nonconforming people, especially for all body types, shapes, and sizes. Your body's vision has always been to help human beings get dressed with confidence, starting with what's underneath. And we welcome more option and avenues for doing that. As a small company with limited reach and resources, and with the awareness that black and brown trans women are the most targeted members of our community, we were excited by the potential to see our community have a meaningful seat at the table with a brand represented by Lizzo and her powerful, vital message of racial and size inclusivity. Now that was a great paragraph. I loved it. No notes. It drives an important point home which is that if you're truly an ally and part of a community, then your support of an initiative that could be an overall net positive for the community should not be conditional on things like you being the sole provider of said service or product as part of the initiative. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about you, it's about the community. So what this tells me is that your body claims to be able to see beyond itself, which is a quality that's really hard not to like. They continue. We reached out to Fabletics last year after they placed that first order with the hopes that we could learn from each other's experiences and understand how they might be committed to developing products with trans fashion experts at the core of a line ostensibly aimed at our community. We didn't hear back. It was only in early 2023 after the Fabletics team placed another order, this time for an assortment of our tucking garments, that we heard back. We wrote to them about our story, the heart and soul that we've put into building our company in partnership with other trans folks, and our sincere hope that a large brand wasn't attempting to profit off our community's hard work without proper recognition or collaboration. When we finally got a meeting to discuss the line, we expected to see our community represented on the team, but we did not. After that meeting, we followed up multiple times with a proposal for how we could partner, but were largely ignored and brushed off. Despite the Yiddy team previously sharing that trans community insight was a gap for them and a key learning opportunity. So basically, your body sees Fabletics order their products. They're like, oop. This major brand is trying to make products for our community using our products. How can we be involved? How can we partner? They're ignored. It's only a whole year later after Fabletics orders more products that your body finally hears back from them. They finally secure a meeting to discuss this potential partnership. 
at the meeting, they were like, where are the trans people? And allegedly, there were none that they could recognize, which is something that your body got called out for later. We'll get to that. Apparently, the Yiddy team also acknowledged that they had entered a space that they knew nothing about and were open to community insight, which if indeed factual, which we don't know because there are no receipts, would be a direct contradiction to Yiddy's Instagram post where they said that your skin was developed after two years of things like community feedback. The statement continues. With the announcement of your skin by Yiddy last week, we're left feeling disappointed, hurt, and taken advantage of. Your skin announced itself with strikingly similar creative copy and designs as your body, from the name to the products. So again, here are the alleged plagiarism allegations. Then they move on with their statement onto elaborating into the root of their disappointment, which is the part that tugged at my heartstrings and got me all up in my feels. Because it takes a lot for anybody, but especially individuals coming from a community that has systemically been made to believe that they're not worth shit, to be like, we see what you're doing, it's not right, and we deserve to be treated better than this. It's hard not to have respect for that. The statement. But our disappointment isn't primarily rooted in feeling copied. It's coming from the reality that the trans community time and time again is overlooked and marginalized, even when we have valuable experiences, talents, and expertise to contribute. As large companies continue to wade into the LGBTQ+, and specifically trans and non-binary market as an opportunity for growth, we become increasingly concerned that these business efforts will be made without properly centering and compensating our community. And if we don't speak up about this now, we worry that many other trans and gender non-conforming people will be similarly exploited. Trans people need systemic and structural support now more than ever. Growing awareness for trans needs has allowed us to become more recognized as a group that deserves equal rights and access, but visibility without adequate protection and involvement further puts us in danger. Businesses need to do their part to fight for us and include us in leadership before they attempt to profit off of us. If Yeti and Fabletics are going to make trans folks the face of the Your Skin line, the trans community should be the backbone, whether that's the Your Body team or other trans experts. We think Yiddy has gotten a lot of things right, from amplifying Lizzo's platform to prioritizing size inclusivity, which makes it all the more disappointing to see this opportunity undercut by our experience. We admire Lizzo and how she's been an advocate for inclusion, and we believe she'd be empathetic and aligned with us if she knew this backstory. We want to bring this matter to her attention, and most importantly, we want to stand up for trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people everywhere who deserve better. So that was the statement. And honestly, nothing really happened after that. Like it, this, this drama completely fizzled out. As far as I know, Fabletics, Yiddy and Lizzo did not respond to it. And that was that. But uh, the drama did spark a lot of divisive debate on social media. There were a lot of hot takes and I would love to know which one you agree with. So what were people saying? Well, you had many camps. You had one camp being like, welp, capitalism, baby. Market research is mere due diligence. As long as it's not intellectual property theft or patent infringement, there's nothing wrong. And this take was sometimes also accompanied by the acknowledgement that notwithstanding, yes, it does suck when a bigger company moves in on your product, but that's life and life isn't fair. So pick yourself up by the bootstraps and start another business with the capital you most likely don't have. In support of your body, you had another camp that was like, sounds like thievery if I've ever seen it. Capitalism isn't an excuse. It's wrong, it's shady, it sounds like performative representation, and Fabletics should have given credit and recognition to your body for the your skin line. They need to make this right. Then you had a camp that was really critical about your body, and the criticism sounded a little something like this. I, I don't know if they're both trans or one is trans and, and one simply identifies as queer. I, I'm not too sure, okay? But this is what some of the posts were saying. 
The mere fact that two white trans women in a position of privilege are coming for a fat black woman who has been an ally and doing the work just because she didn't do it according to their arbitrary standards when they are not putting that same energy towards going for giant corporations owned by Caucasian male demons is the real life embodiment slash manifestation of white supremacy. This is nothing more than white supremacy powered misogynoir and anti-fatness and like do you not know anything about intersectionality and it's like actually most people don't know anything about intersectionality because if you got off your academic high horse for just a second and looked around you you'd quickly realize that unfortunately being educated in america especially is a privilege that many people don't have Romy. And then you had a lot of people who were coming for your body, especially that whole we saw no trans representation part of the statement. People were like, what? Are you like the arbiter of transness now? So here's what I think. Give me the receipts. Where are the fucking receipts? And I really hope nobody interprets this as me being like victim blaming. Let's not be naive. When you make an allegation that comes for somebody's reputation or livelihood, it needs to be understood as no less than a declaration of war. And I really hope you know by now, we know by now as a society, that most people aren't just going to sit silently and take the L. Like, no, most people and entities are going to defend themselves and that will often mean going on the offense and attacking your ass right back. So I really think people need to start thinking more strategically about the different angles of attack that their opponents could come for to try and take credibility away from the allegations. And I'm no lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that legal advice would most definitely start by telling you to get all your ducks in a row and do what? provide and get together the motherfucking receipts the receipts like you're telling me that you packaged a full size run of your products shipped it build it process the payment sent emails back and forth did a fucking powerpoint presentation and shit and the good people of the internet can't see any of it what did i ever do to you like you're getting people like me emotionally invested in your story, but then not giving us anything to chew on. People like me will always instinctively empathize and want to support the little guy. But when you're going up against Goliath, my friend, you need the motherfucking receipts. But more seriously, what it sounds like Fabletics allegedly did to your body, while I instinctively think it's wrong, in our world, unfortunately, is business as usual. People are always looking for ways to reach a customer while skipping over the middleman. And if I'm playing the devil's advocate, on jaz pour jazi, that means let's talk just to talk in French, okay? Let's debate to debate, okay? If I'm playing the devil's advocate, Fabletics could argue that they did invest in the community. They ordered and paid for a bunch of your body's products, did they not? That was their investment. Your body obviously feels like that was not enough because they feel like they were not compensated for all the time, effort, and expertise involved in developing the products based on what I understand. But if I'm playing the devil's advocate again, from Fabletics perspective, the pricing of your body's products should be representative of all that. Like I could very easily see how a trad capitalist Caucasian boomer businessman might not be sympathetic to this cause. He might think something along the lines of, well, my friend, if your own business model is making you feel like you're being sold short, then you need to change your business model. Because of course, someone with that psychographic profile would most likely think that it's just that easy because it's been just that easy for him his whole life. At the end of the day though, the reason I think Fabletics and Giddy really missed the mark with this collection is because a core lesson of this drama is that when you're dealing with selling products to a community that is persecuted, endangered, and literally the subject of genocidal rhetoric, business as usual doesn't cut it and never will, period. 
You are to hold yourself and will be held to a higher standard. What is baseline acceptable or normal within capitalism will always fall short. Because you know, if you did your research, which you obviously didn't, a big reason why this community is marginalized is because of systems like capitalism and moves like Yiddy allegedly just did that fucks those communities up the ass. But of course, nobody was able to put you onto that. Not even Lizzo, which I'm sure, unfortunately, was probably part of your bet. I have some breaking news for you, Fabletics. Just because someone like Lizzo is in possession of one or two marginalized identities by being, quote, fat and black, doesn't make her a spokesperson, nor an expert, nor a gateway into all the marginalized identities that exist on the planet. You can't just be like, oh, great, a fat black woman? Tell us how to sell to the trans community without fucking up. Surprise! You're gonna fuck up. Lizzo is many things, but being a trans woman or gender non-conforming is not one of them. Yiddy and Fabletics did not do their homework in launching this product and it shows. But at least according to Fabletics' alleged history, fucking up is a feeling that they're luckily already acquainted with. Coffee at 8 p.m. at night? Don't mind if I do. One cannot talk about Yiddy controversies without talking about its controversial partner, Fabletics. There are many reasons why people don't like that Lizzo is collaborating with this brand. And that is because this brand has a troubled history that ranges from allegations of shady subscription services to allegations of labor abuse and founders that some people think have a very interesting, for lack of a better word, entrepreneurial backstory. Basically, not much is known about Fabletics, but whatever you can find after doing a little bit of digging doesn't make them look so great. Optics wise, we'll get into all that. Based on the information I was able to find, Fabletics is an athleisure brand that was launched in 2013 by two men called Adam Goldenberg and Don Ressler. Currently, it says that someone called Ginger Wrestler, who seems to be Don's wife, is listed as a co-founder. But it also says on the company's website that Kate Hudson was an initial founder. So I'm a little confused. Maybe someone watching can help me demystify all that. Anyways, apparently now it seems like Kate Hudson is in a advisory role. Fabletics is a brand that exists under the umbrella of the fashion incubator textile group, previously called Just Fab Inc. I spoke about textile group in my Savage Fenty video. Textile group also owns a stake in brands like Savage Fenty, Just Fab, Fab Kids, and Shoedazzle.com. The company is very successful, and according to a 2020 New York Times article, it's valued at about $1 billion. And it's a success story that is due in no small part thanks to their subscription-based business model that has also historically received a lot of heat. Fire flames, hot. By far, the biggest beef people have with Textile Group and its brand Fabletics is its subscription service and its alleged marketing practices. The consumer advocacy group Truth in Advertising argues that these practices, quote, ensnare customers into unwanted monthly charges and that they quote use dissuasion and diversion tactics when consumers try to cancel their memberships so the gist of the allegations is that people allege that when you would go onto the fabletics website in the past that they would advertise a discounted price for a product that would only be available to you if you enrolled in the membership and the allegation is that at the time, that information wasn't clearly and conspicuously advertised. They also allege that when you did buy a product from their website, that the system would automatically enroll you into a $50 a month subscription service or membership. And it was up to you to opt out. This is a practice called negative option billing. A lot of people don't like this. And once you did opt in, either by your own volition or by mistake because you didn't see that you were opting in for it, the company allegedly made it very difficult for you to discontinue the subscription. And Fabletics, including other textile group brands such as Savage Fenty, have gotten into trouble for this. And it's trouble that according to a BuzzFeed News expose I found, allegedly seems to follow the company's founders wherever they go.
We'll get to that. In 2014, Textile Group paid $1.88 million to settle a consumer protection lawsuit that alleged its brands, including Fabletics, failed to clearly and conspicuously explain that its discounts required automatic monthly subscription fees. The judgment permanently prohibited the company from engaging in deceptive negative option offers. But then, a couple of years later, the allegations started to flare up again. In 2022, Lavender Lingerie LLC, doing business as Savage Fenty, Savage Fenty being one of the brands under Textile Group, remember, was fined and got into trouble for this very same kind of bullshit. In August 2022, Santa Clara County and four other California local governments allege that Savage Fenty misled customers by automatically enrolling them into the brand's VIP plan and making it really hard for them to get out of it. They were also accused of allegedly falsely advertising the ability to use store credit and allegedly misled customers over product pricing. In December 2022, Savage Fenty was fined $1.2 million in order to settle the lawsuit. I break everything down in my Savage Fenty video. So if you're interested in checking that one out, again, I won't tell you what to do with your life, but highly recommend it. So a concern people have with Lizzo collaborating with Fabletics is that they are worried that the same kind of problems could happen with her brand Yiddy. Yiddy, as I mentioned before, adheres to the same subscription-based business model as Fabletics and Savage Fenty. It's $59 a month for a subscription. You need to skip the month four to five days into the month if you don't want to be charged. The discounted price listed on the website is only for VIP members, but at least so far on the website, everything seems clear. Just as clear as how much the African women making Fabletics garments in Africa allegedly hate their jobs. So. Remember at the beginning of this video, I was making fun of the statement Yiddy posted to tease their new Your Skin collection. Specifically, I was clowning the line that said, quote, I hope you feel the love in every stitch. Well, that is because in 2021, Fabletics was caught in the crosshairs of a bombshell expose by Time Magazine and The Fuel Report. This bombshell expose uncovered some horrifying practices that occurred at the Garmin factory they subcontracted to make their almond mom athleisure. So the story is that Fabletics had partnered with a Taiwanese company called Hippo Knitting Factory in Lesotho, Africa. To give you some relevant background info, according to the Time article, currently the U.S. is the largest recipient of Lesotho garment exports. The garment industry in Lesotho is the country's second biggest employer. 90% of the workers employed are women. The country makes clothes for some of America's most prominent brands, such as Levi Strauss, Wrangler, JCPenney, and Walmart. It's an attractive country to do business in due to low labor costs, tax benefits, and according to the Time article, uh, in the 2000s, then President Bill Clinton signed the trade deal called the African Growth and Opportunity Act, and this act allowed duty-free exports to the U.S., which according to the article, really made the industry boom. The country specializes in denim, but a big part of the industry is also dedicated to making knit garments, such as t-shirts, tracksuits, and sportswear, like the leggings made by fast fashion brand Fabletics. So in 2021, Time Magazine and The Fuel Report dropped this bombshell expose that revealed that the working conditions at Hippo Knitting Factory were absolutely horrendous. A far cry from love being put into every stitch. Mm -hmm. You see? You see what I did there? So, in fact, this is how some of the individuals who came forward described their experiences working at Hippo Knitting Factory. Quote, we are tired. We need help. And we work with bleeding hearts. End quote. Quote, I hate my job, but I cannot leave because there is nowhere else, end quote. And finally, quote, it's like I'm in jail, end quote. So trigger warning for the allegations. Hippo Knitting Factory employed a thousand people, 90% of which were women. According to the Time Magazine article, 38 people came forward with allegations of abuse and harassment, which included 13 women who said that their underwear and private parts were exposed during routine daily searches. 
One woman who said her supervisor tried to pressure her into a sexual relationship. Three other women who allege that male supervisors tried to essay them. Several of those workers also added that they were humiliated and verbally abused by management. Some workers also said that they were forced to crawl on the floor by supervisors as punishment. And finally, one woman said she urinated herself because a supervisor prevented her from using the bathroom. So pretty bad. And the working environment allegedly seemed to be no better. According to the Time Magazine article, these workers made $150 a month, Women were allegedly arranged into sewing lines of 30, where they were allegedly pressured to complete up to 1,400 garments a day. If they missed their targets, they allegedly had to stay at work past 5 p.m. without pay, which, by the way, is in violation of Lesotho's labor laws. The factory allegedly had poor air circulation, and when the workers would get the opportunity to get some fresh air by, let's say, eating lunch outdoors, they were met with the beautiful smell of sewage from a septic tank that spewed onto the factory yard floor, which is where the women ate their lunch every day. It seems like the workers at the factory did go on strike to demand better conditions, like better pay. But they were met with water cannons and rubber bullets that the police used to disperse the protests. At least two of the workers at Hippo Knitting Factory died during the protests. When these allegations came out, Fabletics was obviously horrified by them. So they paused operations with the factory and launched an investigation. After the scandal, the company implemented all kinds of measures, checks and balances, and a plan to make things right. They introduced a plan to combat gender-based violence and released an updated ethical sourcing code. It seems like they partnered with human rights organizations such as Africa Rising, as well as the Lesotho government and local unions to introduce binding commitments around worker rights. They conduct audits now and shit, okay? After the investigation was done, they resumed operations with Hippo Knitting Factory. As of 2021, and according to the Time Magazine article, it seems like Fabletics is still Hippo Knitting Factory's biggest client. So basically, it seems like they made some big moves to clean up their supply chain, but this raises another issue around the lack of transparency and traceability of their supply chain. The only reason we have this much information is because of the investigative report. Fabletics and Yiddy are telling us to consumers that they're putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to ethics and sustainability. But there's no real way for us to check that. We just gotta take their word for it. Okay, it's pretty much impossible to find any information on Yiddy's supply chain. Hi, it's me from the edit cam. Uh, sorry to break the flow, but I had to re-record this section because I, I found new information. The investigation got deeper. I, I put a crown on for consistency, but if you wanted to know what I look like when I'm not shooting, this is this is the vibe. This is the most of the most of the this is the Monday to Friday doesn't leave her house and spends her life in front of a computer vibe. Yiddy does not disclose any information on its supply chain. Like you will be hard pressed to find any information on, on anything, okay? Tell, it doesn't tell us where it manufactures its products, nothing. Like you literally have to go out of your way to look for it, which is part of the problem, okay? But I'll tell you what I did find. I landed on a website called Import Genius that seems to point to the fact that Yiddy's suppliers are mostly in China. The website gives you a list of other potential, like other trading partners that you can look at. I wasn't able to fact check this information, okay? So take it with a grain of salt, but that's all I could find, okay? And I'll compare that a little later to a company that is more transparent and with their supply chain, and you'll see why this lack of information is lacking, okay? Also, Yiddy advertises its products as being made using recyclable materials, but they also are not transparent about what those materials are. Like they don't give the consumer any real detail about the materials they are using. All you get information wise next to a product that is supposed to fall under its sustainability umbrella, because many of the products uh, are not used making any sustainable materials at all, is a little like 54% recycled nylon. That's all you get. So there's a lot we don't know, but what we do know 
is that Fabletics is not a sustainable brand. There is a handy tool called goodonyou.eco that you can use to find out whether or not a brand is ethical or sustainable. So I, I used a tool to see if I could find anything on Yiddy. First of all, Yiddy is still too new and not available in their database, but Fabletics is. The score that Fabletics is given is not good. Not good. Goodonyou.eco says that Fabletics, from an ethical and sustainability standpoint, is a brand to a void. A void. A void. And on the website, what's really cool about it is that they will also suggest some alternative brands that you can shop for that are more sustainable. One of the brands they suggest, like right underneath Fabletics, is a brand called Girlfriend Collective, which I was really happy to see because I'm a fan. I bought one of their unitards, uh, like over a year ago, loved it so much. I bought another one and then another one because I was like, God forbid this ever goes out of stock and I will literally die. So I just needed, I needed my own stock. I loved it so much. And I'm, I'm wearing the unitard right now. It's the only thing I've been wearing lately. So it's so good. Highly recommend that brand. This is not sponsored. This is genuinely just a consumer that really likes the product. So let me show you the unitard. This is the unitard. Can you see me? This is the unitard. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Highly recommended. It's sturdy. It's good quality. Like it's actually, you know, it's, 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 um, it's tick. It's tick. And I mean, I've had it, I've had it forever and it's still good. And it's literally, literally the only thing I wear. Steve Jobs vibes. Like where I, I just, I can't be fucking, I can't be fucking bothered to like pull together like an actual look every day. So I just wear the same thing. And what I'm wearing has been this unitard. So good, okay? The unitard is so good, but not as good as the tea I was able to find on Lizzo's business partners. Back to the edit cam. So we can actually compare the amount of information a brand like Girlfriend Collective gives us about their supply chain and sustainability efforts as compared to what Yiddy gives us, which is nothing. Okay, 54% recycled nylon. That's all Yiddy is giving us. So on the easily findable fact page of a brand like Girlfriend Collective, you can find information on what factory they use, the country, the address, the name, everything. They will also provide you, the consumer, with proof that the factory operates at a certain ethical standard by linking you to their SA8000 certification. The SA8000 standard is the world's leading social certification program. The SA8000 standard and its certification system provides a framework for organizations of all types in any industry and in any country to conduct business in a way that is fair, fair and decent for workers and to demonstrate their adherence to the highest social standards, okay? This is a certification that was made according to the standard and based on the principles of international human rights norms as described in international labor, labor organization conventions, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, okay? so. The SA8000 is a standard, okay, that provides companies with a certification that is based on the principles, on like widely held principles as it pertains to like human rights and this types of things. Now, what we know about Fabletics is that Fabletics adheres to a standard called its ethical sourcing code, which was created to the standard and the principles of whomst? Fabletics and the national slash local governments in which they do business, which I don't know about you, but to me, that doesn't quite sound like the same standard or quality of standard. When we look at Yiddy, for example, the brand tells us that some of its products are made using, as an example, recycled nylon, but they don't give us any more information than that. The thing is, this is, you know, pushing the investigation further. Apparently, there are different types of recycled nylon. There is eco nail, eco rib. There is also biodegradable nylon. And then when you compare that to a brand like Girlfriend Collective, um, in talking about one of its collections, which is like the maternity collection, it went a step further in disclosing that it used the eco nail recycled nylon fabric. So it told us 
specifically the type of recycled nylon. And then a brand like Girlfriend Collective will go even a step further by providing consumers with proof that they have tested these recycled fabrics to know what they are and to know that they meet a certain human ecological standard. Um, a brand like Girlfriend Collective will provide you with a certification that their products meet the standard, meet the standard called the Standard 100 by Eocotex. Okay. Basically, this, this certification means that the brand knows the full contents of the products uh, that they are using up front, and they are given an assurance that these products have been uh, tested next to a slew of harmful chemicals to make sure that they're safe. Now, why is certification important? Uh, Girlfriend Collective gave us a little bit of information on why a certification is important, and I think it's pretty relevant to Yiddy if you ask me. According to Girlfriend Collective's website, quote, it is a well-known fact in the recycling industry that in places like China, where Yiddy seems to be manufacturing its products, in places like China, with loose certifications and accountability standards, many will lie about where they get their plastic. In other words, they'll tell you it's recycled material. But is it really? You know what I mean? The same way Yiddy is telling you they're using recycled nylon, but how the fuck do I know? And most importantly, how the fuck do they know? Which brings me to Lizzo's business partners, the actual founders of Fabletics, which on this on the topic of knowing, we don't know much about, but what we know, buckle up, Becky, the founders. Who are Lizzo's business partners? I feel like the public knows quite a bit about Lizzo. Okay? On jase pour jaser. That means let's talk to talk in French Canadian. If we want to talk about, let's say, the Your Body drama, I don't think Lizzo's allyship is under debate. I don't think anybody really, like, may, you might have some people in the fringes of the internet being like, she's not really an ally. But, like, generally speaking, I think Lizzo falls under the umbrella of ally, okay? Nobody is really debating this, okay? We know things about Lizzo. We know things, okay? We know who she voted for. She campaigned and voted for Joe Biden. She supports abortion. She wanted to defund the police. We know things about her that make the brand she's creating make sense. Coming from her. Coming from her. Her. Lizzo. Lizzo is not the only person involved in this brand. She owns it alongside the founders of Fabletics, Adam Goldenberg and Don Ressler. So I did a little research for you. And... Bitch! Yo, I was literally just trying to find some kind of digital footprint that, that could indicate to me where they stood on political issues relevant to Yiddy. Literally, I was just trying to see, like, was it Joe Biden? You know? Is it, is it giving Bernie Sanders? Was it giving Elizabeth Warren? Like, could I, could I find anything, right? That's what I was looking for. But... The universe is bountiful indeed. And uh, God would bless me with a masterpiece by BuzzFeed News called, quote, Just Fab, the billion dollar startup with a dark past. And I was not ready for it. I was shook. The story BuzzFeed News tells us is that Don Ressler and Adam Goldenberg have been longtime business partners and very successful ones at that. Like, I wish I had that track record. I would most likely not be living at my mom's house at 30 years old, amongst other things. The two met in the early 2000s at a company called Intermix Media, which was the parent company of, guess what, MySpace. That's like, that's like one hell of a throw, like MySpace, that's a, these, these guys have been online. Hashtag been online, okay? So they both worked in the product marketing division called Alina of Intermix Media, which was the parent company of MySpace. 
Goldenberg apparently joined the company when he was a teen and became the president of Alina in 2004. I don't know how old that makes him when he became the president, but it probably makes him way smarter than me. Alina was so successful that it was responsible for most of Intermix's $79 million of revenue in the year that ended March 31st, 2005. And it seems like these two have been in business together on various entrepreneurial endeavors since then. Entrepreneurial endeavors that BuzzFeed News is no real fan of. BuzzFeed News is not a fan of them. I am Switzerland. According to a 2014 BuzzFeed News expose, the businesses these partners have been involved in have been, quote, conning consumers into subscription services for products like anti-aging shampoo and wrinkle cream under the guise of brand building and innovation, end quote, for the past 20 plus years. And I was like, say what come on it's too good it's just too good okay according to buzzfeed news since 2004 consumers have been accusing the businesses these two partners have been involved in of doing things like quote exploiting credit card information sticking them with unwanted charges and quote deceptive advertising and misleading promises. Sound familiar? According to BuzzFeed News, at least six of the brands associated with the two men who founded Fabletics received complaints from consumers and the complaints all sounded a little something like this. A customer signs up for a free trial of a product, entering their credit card details to cover a four to five dollar shipment fee. But if the product wasn't returned within a few weeks and accounts from customers say this was incredibly tough to do so, they ended up with anywhere from $50 to $100 in charges and a recurring subscription that was a nightmare to cancel. Wait a second. I feel like I know this song. So then I was like, I wonder what some of the products prior to Savage Fenty, Yiddy, and Fabletics, these two visionaries used to sell our ah ah only the best kind of products we had dream shape diet pills meant for consumption before bedtime and that would quote burn fat while you sleep lizzo are you listening then we had the hydroderm body shape cellulite toning lotion which was a quote secret weapon that would help tone and firm the areas that exercise alone can't shape we had chronos hair products that were sold as botox for your hair we had raw minerals a knockoff of better known makeup line bare minerals we had hydroderm anti-wrinkle creams promising results quote better than Botox. Say what you want to say. Assume whatever you want to assume. But these two have a sense of humor. But the biggest masterpiece was a company called Sensa, which according to BuzzFeed News is better known as, quote, the largest weight loss scam ever targeted by the FTC and as the Bureau's second biggest deceptive advertisement settlement ever. But under capitalism, let's just call it good business, baby. The product that Sensa was allegedly, apparently, selling was a appetite suppressant powder that tapped into a alleged medical phenomenon called, quote, sensory specific satiety. I've worked with a nutritionist before, and I have no fucking idea what that means. These claims that BuzzFeed News states turned out to be bogus were supposedly based on 25 years of research and testing from a doctor called Alan Hirsch. But Alan Hirsch, it turns out, created Sensa and owned 10% of the business. America. So right as this company was flaming out and Sensa was allegedly being sued and chased by creditors for unpaid debts, always pay your debts. These two geniuses were on to the next project, Just Fab, 
According to BuzzFeed News, Just Fab between 2012 and 2014 received more complaints than Time Warner and only a thousand complaints less than America's most hated company, Spirit Airlines. Listen up, listen up. I don't really care about any of that. Winners are gonna win. And those two are winners. Merka. The only thing I care about is who the fuck these two supported at the last election. Tell the good people of the 2SLGBTQIA plus who you supported and we'll leave you alone. Was it Bernie? No? Too much of a commie? Okay. Uh, Biden? Warren? Listen, if you're really out here selling products to the 2SLGBTQIA plus community, there can only be a few right answers. And all the other answers would most definitely guarantee you a place where? In hell. Right next to who? DJ Academics. Exactly. I thought about this the other day. Don't be vanilla when you can be Napolitan. If you get it, you get it. Let me know if you got it. But by far, the biggest controversy facing Lizzo's new brand doesn't have anything to do with her partners. It has nothing to do with the business practices or rainbow capitalism. It's quite literally the mere fact that Lizzo even started a shapewear brand at all. So let's get into it. By the way, I, I, I wanted to take like a supper, a dinner break before finishing this video, but I realized that the chicken I made last night, like an idiot, I left it, it was cooked, but I, but I left it out on the counter like overnight and I just Googled it and Google was like, maybe don't eat that. So like I just cooked a bunch of chicken to make these awesome tacos and now I can't even fucking eat it. Likely someone of an older generation would tell me just eat it. It's not like, it's probably not gonna kill you. But like, I'm hyper paranoid about like getting, I just, I think food poisoning is my is my biggest like source of anxiety. Like I, I cannot eat things if I might even suspect that it's gonna give me food poisoning. So now I can't fucking eat my tacos. And because of my anxiety, I'm gonna have to, my tacos that are probably not even gonna kill me, they're probably fine, but I can't get past my anxiety. And now I'm gonna have to, order spend money on food uh for no reason because of my anxiety so let's end this video with shapewear and the future of body positivity you know i love shapewear i'm not i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie shapewear makes me feel kunt it makes me feel kunt as fuck kunt not to be confused with kunt kunt is like the german german techno bunker like berlin version of cunt german german techno bunker berlin infused version of cunt it's kunt c u with a okay and the n and a t kunt so you may or may not know this but shapewear has a really depressing history and it's a history that's rooted many people argue in patriarchal control and the systemic oppression and policing of women's bodies, like everything else in the world, right? Shapewear has traditionally fallen under the territory of women attempting to modify their bodies in order to appeal to the male gaze, which traditionally has meant women trying to contort their bodies into a shape that signals to the monkey male brain that they are very efficient and effective reproduction factories, aka the hourglass figure. According to the New York Times, shapewear is a direct descendant of the mindset that brought society things like girdles, whalebone canvas or steel corsets, and eventually in the 2000s, products like Spanx. Bottom line is, the use of these products implied and imply that what you're born with and what you're working with without modification wasn't good enough, wasn't and isn't good enough. So the New York Times frames Lizzo's entry into shapewear as being controversial because it's the type of garment that is the opposite of the message of body positivity and loving yourself as you are that Lizzo represents and champions in her various artistic endeavors. But of course, Lizzo was prepared by who? 
her think tank. She was prepared by her think tank for the critique. And her angle is that Yiddy's mission is to change the essence of shapewear itself. And instead of shapewear representing the policing of bodies, shapewear under the influence of Lizzo could potentially represent agency and autonomy over one's body, breeding and encouraging exploration, experimentation, and creativity rather than shame. Lizzo tells Harper's Bazaar, it's not about making your clothing smooth and quote, perfect. It's about taking ownership of your physical presence and your identity in the world and not allowing a piece of clothing to dictate how you should feel about your body. You're telling the piece of clothing, this is how I feel about my body today. If you want to emphasize a Coke bottle shape one day, you can do that. And the next, an apple silhouette. Quote, we're giving the consumer the autonomy to choose different levels of compression and style. They're really the ones who are making the decision. They're the boss. Now, I buy like... 50% of this. And the other 50%, I think, is Lizzo blowing smoke up my ass. And I'll tell you why. When a brand sells you an idea, an ethos, or a vision, the only way one can determine if it isn't bullshit is via their actions. Not the words, not the social media propaganda, the actions. The products they sell with compression, AKA their shapewear, compresses you where? Donde? In all the predictable ways and in all the predictable places. Ways predicated by the tastes and control of whomst? The male gaze. Yiddy's compression seems to do the same thing that shapewear has done since the dawn of time, which is flattening your tummy area and emphasizing your bum, bust, and hips. If Yiddy was really about allowing people to play with the shape of their body, a design that would reflect that is, I don't know, a unitard that compresses everything but the tummy. Kind of like, um, like maternity wear, but make it Kunt. But listen, listen, I am an entrepreneurial, I am an entrepreneurial person myself. I totally understand why they wouldn't make a product like that. And that is because the demand for that kind of product probably isn't there. And that is because people have been living under thousands of years of phallic mind control and brainwashing. And that is most definitely something that you can't just undo with clever marketing. Reinventing shapewear would literally mean reinventing society. And I love what I know about you, Lizzo. And I don't know everything. I don't, I, I don't know you. But what I know about you, I like. And bitch. Okay? Right when you think we've made some progress, bitch, we get pulled right back. Someone like Donald Trump pops up. Someone like Ron DeSantis get some steam it's like it's it's incredible okay that doesn't mean you shouldn't try i appreciate the effort however i won't end on a negative note i will end on a positive note if shapewear in its current iteration even if it remains a tool defined by the male gaze allows people of different sizes to feel confident in their skin and show it off instead of hiding it behind loose fitting clothing I love that. And as a result, I do believe that showing off one's body confidently can contribute to at least one of Lizzo's stated missions with Yiddy, which is to move past body positivity and move towards body normativity. So Lizzo has spoken a lot about how she wants to move past body positivity and towards what she calls body normativity, not to be confused with body neutrality. Body normativity being the normalization of all bodies. And I think Lizzo is onto something with this. Quote, I think it's lazy for me to just say I'm body positive at this point. I would like to be body normative. I want to normalize my body. Being fat is normal. And I honestly couldn't agree more. Being plus sized is normal. As far as I know, 
the data seems to point in that direction. But do you know what else is the norm? We both look at the same kind of social media, okay? You know what else is the norm? Plastic surgery, cosmetic enhancement. You wanna know what's more normal than we think it is? Restrictive dieting, obsessive exercising, and this is why I'd like to take her idea of body normativity and pitch a little extension to it. A little something called body transparency. I personally am sick and fucking tired of consuming images of bodies on social media and especially in advertisements without there being disclosure of what has been done to those bodies, what it takes to achieve those kinds of bodies and the implications of looking a certain way. I'd like to see the fine print the risks and the side effects. I think the only way people can separate themselves emotionally from what they see online for their own mental health and make informed decisions that are safe, right, and achievable for them is to be equipped with all the facts and have all the motherfucking receipts.